Shapiro, editor in chief of DailyWire.com, and Richard Fowler, nationally syndicated radio host and a Fox News contributor. Good to have both of you here. Um, you know, let, let me start with you on this, Richard. Uh, your thoughts on free speech, and, and as, as we do this, let's put up an image that shows 1964 Berkeley, which is you know, considered the home of, of the free speech movement um, as we headed into war. Berkeley 2017 on the right-hand side of your screen um, is a pretty shocking dichotomy. Richard. Well, I think what we saw last night was devastating. And as much as I don't agree with Milo or Milo or what he stands for, what he believes, and I think he has the right to speak at Berkeley, and I think the university believes the same thing. And I think to go one step further than that, I think those who rioted, they're, they're wrong, and I think they don't represent the broader progressive movement. And so I think it's a mistake to lump them in with those progressives like myself who are saying we're going to peacefully protest, we're going to peacefully obstruct, uh, and we, because we don't, we don't like somebody's views, given, which is the right we have by the Constitution. Ben, what do you think? I mean, I think that a lot of what Richard is saying is true, but I do think that there's a mentality that's being inculcated on a lot of college campuses, and I speak at 20, 25, 30 of these a year. Uh, there, there's a mentality that suggests that speech that you don't like is some sort of violence. It's a microaggression to be met with macroaggression. And so when you start with the premise it's okay to punch Nazis, and then you say everyone's a Nazi, and everyone who offends you is a Nazi, then pretty soon it's pretty easy to see how things break down. And I mean, that's why I've had riots against me at Cal State Los Angeles. We had a near riot at Penn State last year. It's becoming a lot less uncommon than, than you would hope it would be, certainly. You know, you look at the protests of the picture that we showed, is the civil rights movement, the Vietnam War that were, you know, based in such, you know, deeply held beliefs. And in some of these cases, Richard, you just have to, you know, sort of wonder when you have students who have been sort of taught that they need, that they require safe spaces around them, that hearing the viewpoint of someone who's different than them is not an education, it's an offense. You know, I, I think that we have to make sure that universities, allow, and, and you know, I give UC Berkeley credit um, in this case because they did come forward and say that they gave him a forum to speak in, and it wasn't necessarily their fault. So Donald uh, Trump, the president's tweet may have been misplaced, really, uh, in terms of its direction. Richard? No, I think his tweet was misplaced. I think the university did everything in their power, and I would, I would argue that probably a lot of these rioters don't go to UC Berkeley. I think the students can protest, and we could disagree with somebody. I think in Milo's case, his writings show that he is part of the alt-right, which is a code word for white supremacy, so I don't particularly ascribe to his beliefs. I'm adamantly against his beliefs, but I believe he has the right to speak. Uh, and so I think that's what we had to make the, very, very, make the very clear distinction. I think to lump all liberals in and to lump professors in and say that we don't want, they don't want to hear, um, you know, voice voices of conservative views, I think that's wrong. I think we, our university system has proven the opposite because it produced a lot of conservative views, whether it be at Harvard, whether it be at UC Berkeley, or whether it be at Yale. Ben, what do you think? Well, I mean, I think that, that there is another problem here, and that is, does the administration do what it's supposed to do in terms of giving the police on its campuses the ability to shut down violent protests? And I think the answer is no. I mean, we've seen that at California State L.A., where I was. You know, there, there was a situation where the administration essentially told the police to stand down and allow protesters to right, do what they, they were going to do. Last night, we saw this go ahead. At, it, well, you know, you've, there's a difference between barricades and having enough officers they there to actually shut down the violence. They officers saw, in riot gear, based on just looking at those videos That's there. right. And, and so, Richard, and, did, Richard and, did they move on the people who are smashed? the auditorium windows? Did they move on the people who are spray painting kill Trump? Neither of us were on the ground to know what the police were doing. I think the point no, I'm no, trying no, to make here is the, video the university did everything in its power to ensure that Mr. Milo was safe. And uh, at the end of the day, because of these people who don't live in, they, don't, they probably don't go to UC Berkeley, they're clearly agitators. We're talking about this story. At the, uh, universities are places of intellectualism. They're laboratories of intellectualism. And I think any university <laughs> will allow conservative speakers to come on their campus and and the job of the conservative speakers is to speak their, to speak their views, and our job is to oppose yeah. them. And you also have to let agree. law enforcement do what they need to do to prevent criminals, which is what these people are, who are destroying property and, and injuring people. One man was there, you know, to protect the right of free speech and got his nose broken. Um, so we, you know, th we can't allow that, and uh, that has to be cracked down on as well. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Richard Fowler, Thanks, Ben Shapiro, Martha. good to see you both tonight.